Hi, this is episode 23 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. On Wednesdays, I like to cover a random topic for developers. And today, I'm gonna discuss the concept of task switching costs. Task switching, commonly referred to as multitasking, can be detrimental to your performance as a developer and can even lead to errors in your projects. Our world has changed dramatically over the past decade. Whether for good or for bad is not not really a topic we're going to discuss today. However, one thing is sure, we're constantly bombarded with distractions. As I was researching this post, I received over a dozen emails, seven Snapchat messages, 30 notifications on Instagram, seven Twitter notifications, five Skype instant messages, and surprisingly, only nine text messages. If you're counting, that's 72 various notifications that were pushed to me in the past two hours when I researched this. Beyond that, I researched this post at a coffee shop filled with potential distractions. So exactly how bad are distractions? Research from Gloria Mark, who is a professor in the Department of Informatics at UC Irvine, showed that it takes on average 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get fully back on task after being distracted. That's a very, very bad thing when it comes to productivity. However, I've seen it myself. I've lost track of how many times I'll be in the middle of a development project and receive an email on a completely unrelated matter. And instead of ignoring it and continuing to work, I'll read it and then spend time working on another task before returning to the project. This may not sound like a major issue, except that when I come back to the project, I don't pick up from where I left off. Instead, I have to re-familiarize myself with what I was working on at the moment that I was distracted. If the problem was complex, it may take me even longer than the 23 minutes in order to get back in the zone and working on the project. So in a world filled with emails and social media distractions, how can anyone get any real work done? After reading Cal Eldred's book, Deep Work, I started to put together some practical ways that I can work efficiently and still stay in touch with the world. First, if I'm working on a project, I set aside a specific amount of time that morning for what I'm gonna be doing. For example, if I'm working on project X for two hours, I'm gonna put it on my calendar and then say from nine to 11 a.m. I'm working on project X. Second, I remove any and all negative distractions during that time. That means I'll usually put my phone on airplane mode so I don't receive any social media notifications. Notice how I said negative distractions. I made this distinction because in the same research report from UC Irvine, it revealed that not all distractions are actually bad. If the distraction is related to the tasks that you're working on, it can actually be beneficial. For example, if I'm working on the routing engine for a web app and the client messages me to discuss the application, what they say may actually influence the work that I'm doing or give me an idea on how to refine it. That's a good distraction and it's why I typically will keep my email and instant messenger on while I'm working. However, if I see that the Skype message or email is coming from another client or is completely unrelated, I'll simply ignore it. I do know many deep work proponents who would say that 100% of your distractions have to be eliminated. However, that's not always practical. Lastly, have a clear conclusion for whatever you're studying or working on. If you don't establish an end of the task, your mind is going to be prone to wander in the same way that a runner without a finish line won't be able to effectively compete in a race. The research around task switching costs also reveals that even planned distractions are harmful. So if you're planning on working for two hours straight on a project, don't plan any breaks in the middle of that task. Maintain your focus throughout the allotted time and then you'll be able to be free to relax afterwards. I hope this has been a helpful overview of task switching costs and that you now have some practical methods for staying on task and staying focused.